Hi, I'm Linda Krenlin. I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Ghostlands, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We are taping on Tuesday, May 31st. We tape All Things LGBTQ at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. So I, I'm hoping you've got some really trashy celebrity you know, stuff for me. Everything I have is depressing, just about. Then we're, going, a, then we're moving on to Anne. I know, and I have, <laughs> I have a lot of optimistic stuff. Good, okay. good. Because maybe the world's doing better than the states. Okay, go for it. All right. Timothy Powish, professor of surgery at Ohio State University, found in their research that belonging to certain groups with long standing Social and economic disadvantages increases the risk of cancer diagnosis and death. People who were, who were non-white and LGBTQ received fewer cancer prevention services and had fewer cancer services. Okay, so I'm done with you already. And screenings. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. Me either. Yeah. Tina Kotek hopes to be America's first lesbian governor. The former Oregon <coughs> House Speaker won the state's Democratic primary. Good. So that's good. That's good news. Yeah. It doesn't get much better than that. A 25-year-old, Julio Rodriguez, died after leaving a gay bar in New York City. He got into a cab with three unidentified men. His bank accounts were drained of cash three days later. Hmm. Oh. And they have no suspects as of now. Montana Bar's birth certificate changes even after surgery. Only Tennessee, Oklahoma, and West Virginia have similar prohibitions against changes to birth certificates. Montana Governor Craig, is, how do you pronounce his name, Giafortes? Administration says trans people cannot change their birth certificates in defiance, even in the defiant, he, so he's defying a court order that temporarily blocked the Republican state's bid to restrict transgender rights. Hmm. Oh. I think his name is pronounced mud. Yeah. <laughs> Deplorable. Yes. I know. Texas resumes some investigation into parents with trans children. The Texas agency tasked with investigating child abuse claims has resumed looking into parents of trans children. Hold, hold on to that thought for a story coming out of Maine. Okay. And Christian University is limiting expression of gender and sexuality. Lee University in Tennessee has proposed that students be restricted and cannot express their sexuality on campus at all. Uh, under the proposed policy, students may not be allowed to identify or dress as gender that differs from their biological sex. Mm. Oh. And I'm going to talk more about this, but two LGBTQ candidates face off in Alabama, cre creating a political rift. LGBTQ event in Florida church ignites public anger and protest threats. Controversy surrounding Naples, Florida Pride event for teens led the organized to request extra police protection. Like, that'll help, right? Mm. The youth conference is geared towards students between 12 and 18. The event is to be held at the Naples United Church of Christ. And the interesting thing about that is that um, they're really, um, they're mad because you can go onto this site apparently and um, go to different rooms and look for different kinds of services and help on their website. And so what the conservatives are really angry about is that um, you can do this without parental um, permission. Yeah. So, mm. so anyway, that's the news there. <clears throat> LBG stu LBGT students are more likely to leave home for college to a more welcoming states. Is that that makes perfect sense to that? me. <laughs> Got a spare room? <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, really. 
Gay oh. student says that, uh, oh, that they're stopping him from um, running for uh, class president. We'll have more about that. And I don't know if you heard about Kevin Spacey. Uh, you know what? But Too he much. may be extradited to the UK over sexual assault charges. Oh, that's right. Yes. Spacey, 64, is being charged with four counts of assault by three men. Mm. So, and then there's a, this is really, I'm going to talk more about this, but the Butch Pal for the straight gal pilot is here. Oh, my. And I'll talk more about this, too. Trans, uh, Texas trans girl is attacked. Mm. Um and a minister preaches that homosexuality merits the death penalty. They'll have more about that. North Carolina uh, introduces their own Don't Say Gay bill. The bill is going through Senate committee now and would prohibit teaching students <coughs> about gender or sexuality in elementary school. And it also can re require that school employees out LGBTQ students in any grade level. So I think they have a Democratic governor, though, in North Carolina. I hope he, he vetoes that. I'll have more about this. Arizona Department of Education attacked for having resources for LGBTQ students. And do you know Braz Dolls? Do you, does anybody know that? Mm -hmm. You do? I no, never I heard I have, about that I before. have nieces who were the right age when they were first introduced. Mm. They were the alternative to Barbies. To Barbies. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, they're having their first same-sex couple dogs for Pride. And the conservatives' heads are spinning. <laughs> um, black gay candidates make history with primary win in Texas. Venton Jones and Christian Hayes are poised to be the first black gay men in the legislature. And black lesbian... Jolana Jones is likely to be reelected. So, see, that's good news, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, right wing anti vaxxer threatens to hunt LGBTQ supporters in a video. Ethan Smith, 24, says he will visit every Target store in Phoenix and will hunt down LGBTQ. Uh, supporters in the store. I don't know how he'll know who the supporters are. And what is he going to do aren't. after he discovers them, if he does? <laughs> he wants to expose what he calls Satan, Satanistic shrines to children. And I think this probably has to do with the Target came out with their new um, line of clothes called Tomboy. Mm -hmm. um, and so this may have pissed him off. I have no idea, but I'm just guessing. Well, let me tell you that the North Carolina governor is Roy Cooper, and indeed he is a Democrat. He is a Democrat. I thought so. So I'm hoping he will um, veto that veto that bill. And this is good because, and we should all be on this list, <coughs> Pete Buttigieg and Rachel Levine are not welcome in Russia. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. <laughs> Others include Biden, Harris, and all LGBT people in Congress. There are 963 people on that list. I think if we send them a clip of our show <laughs> that we're guaranteed a top spot. Uh -huh. And Indiana lawmakers have overridden the governor's veto to enact an anti-trans bill. So mm -hmm. I think I will save the rest for the next segment. I, I think that's more than enough. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's more depressing <coughs> news. Just hang in there. I've got my own. Okay. I have two um, stories. One corresponds with Keith's, so maybe I'll hold that and go to my one really kind of dreary story um, involving Senegal. An advocacy, advocacy group in Senegal demands better treatment for LGBTQ prisoners. The founder of the Senegalese advocacy group, um, Collective Free du Senegal, says that prisoners suffer physical and sexual abuse, especially from other inmates. Um, he notes that prison wardens are often reluctant to respond because of the current laws in Senegal. 
which are um, same-sex relations are prohibited under the country's 1965 penal code that criminalizes so-called unnatural acts between one point, one, so the uh, penalty is one to five years in prison and a fine that can range between $170 and $2,580. Both men and women are criminalized under this law and so their raids occur periodically and the police beat up LGBTQ people and then put them in prison. There's no solitary confinement for LGBTQ prisoners. So they're especially vulnerable to inmate attacks. And there's a story of a 2020 raid in which one young man was roughed up in the police station and then complained of being tortured in prison and he had a pain and nobody treated it and he didn't go to the infirmary and then following his release, he shortly died. So that's the kind of thing going on in Senegal. Uh, overcrowding has worsened the situation and increased rejection. Lesbian women um, are, there's less information about their treatment, <coughs> but they're verbally abused and they're a little, they're physically abused a little less. Um, so anti-LGBT groups, you may recall I reported that um, some people in the um, law, in the body of law requested that between one and five years of imprisonment for homosexuality wasn't enough, they wanted to make it 10. That law was voted down, but uh, anti-LGBTQ groups last May burned the pride flag during a rally and demanded a new, more repressive anti-LGBT law to be passed. They called for the criminalization of homosexuality to be an issue in the next presidential wow. election in 2024. Awful. So that's my main bad news uh, from Senegal, and that's my only African story, unfortunately. Now let me go on to another continent, Australia, which has good news. Anthony Albanese wins the Australian election. Hooray! Defeating the anti-LGBTQ plus good. Scott Morrison. That deplorable. Maybe he is lucky. I know it. Uh, it says a lot about our great country that the son of a single mom who has a disability, who was a disability pensioner, who grew up in public housing down the road in Camperdown, can stand before you tonight as Australia's Yay. new prime minister. It marks the end of almost nine years of conservative rule by the country's Liberal Party. Um, Morrison's been in office since 2017. He voted against same-sex marriage legislation. This is Morrison against same-sex marriage legislation launched an attack on Australia's LGBTQ community. He launched and proposed and introduced his religious discrimination bill, which would have allowed the expulsion of LGBTQ students from religious schools under the guise of religious freedom. Um, he also backed calls to ban trans women from female sports uh, supported a vehemently anti-trans liberal candidate who blessedly lost. Maybe uh, there's a turn in the world. I, I hope so. Uh, he's commonly known as Albo, and he campaigned on immediate action on climate change, improving yeah. free health care, and for LGBTQ plus rights. Just Equal spokeswoman Sally Grober said, the true winners in this election have been equality, inclusion, and acceptance for LGBTQ plus Australians. So here, here. Yeah. Um, now let's go to Europe, where I have a lot of good news. Austria. Even England? Yes, <laughs> yes. I have some entertainment news from England that's uh -huh. diverting. Um, yes, yeah, so let's go to Austria, where it's going to lower their hurdles for LGBTQ plus citizens to donate blood. Um, Citizens will only be prevented if they have had sex with three different partners in the last three months, regardless of gender or sexual orientation. 
France, Spain, Italy, and the UK have all recently lowered the hurdles that prevent LGBTQ plus citizens from donating blood. So Austria has joined the crowd. Now let's go to England where we have some exciting news. Uh, let's sh let me show you a picture now of um, the two stars of Heartstoppers. Oh. Uh, Joe Locke, who plays Charlie, and Kit <coughs> Connor, who plays Nick. Nick. And Heartstoppers is going to be renewed for two more seasons on Netflix. Um, it's been a critical and audience hit since launching its platform on April 22nd. Does it need parental? No. <laughs> Reaching Netflix's top 10 list in 54 countries. And I showed you a clip on the yeah, show. Yeah. Uh, that's also been its success has also been clear <coughs> on social media, where it flew to the top of Variety's trending TV chart in the week of its release with 1.05 million engagements on Twitter. Over the last four weeks, it's remained at the top of the chart. Earlier this month, Kit Connor, who plays Nick, told Variety how important the show was to him. To have a show where you see queer people being happy and being together and united as a group, I think there's something really beautiful about that, he said. I think it's really important to have a show that is just portraying queer love and queer beauty. That's so, wonderful. It's the youth we never had. I yeah. know it. I know it. And I, we have yet to watch it, but I think we really should yeah. tune in. Uh, there's a related story. Now, I have a picture for you of Yasmin Finney, who is a Heartstopper star, and she's been cast as the new Rose in Doctor Who. Ah. She's set to star as Rose in Doctor Who's 60th anniversary series next oh. year. Uh, she was originally played, Rose was originally played by Billy Piper when the series was revived in 2005. Did you both My watch it? My kids used to watch, uh, I used to watch it with them when they were young, the very early seasons of Doctor Who. Yeah. It's been around a long time. I cannot wait to begin this journey and for you all to see how Rose blossoms. Get ready, she said. I'm ready. She added that if eight-year-old Yasmin could see where she is now, I would never in a million years have believed them. She's currently starring in Heartstopper as L, Charlie and Tao's friend who is transfer who transferred to Harvey Green Grammar School for Girls after coming out as transgender. <coughs> uh, Davies, this person who masterminded be, the mastermind behind the Doctor Two in 2005, is until from 2005 till 2010, is set to return. You'll find out in 2023, but it's an absolute joy to welcome Yasmin to the Doctor Who set. We all fell in love with her in Heartstopper, one of those shows which changes the world. And now Yasmin can change the Hooniverse. Yes. Hooniverse. Well, we should probably move on to Keith now, if that's okay with you. And Well, let me just... I have one more UK story okay. involving a picture, the rainbow coin, observe it before you. Oh, written, I saw that, yeah. written, It's it, Well, the picture you're seeing it's is kind of, uh, it's commemorative. Yeah. It's the size of a 50 cent piece. I couldn't find an exact replica, so you're seeing it, but it's bigger than it normally is. It's a commemorative 50 pence coin as a tribute to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Pride UK. Uh, state of the print, state of the art printing technology embosses it with colors of the Pride Progress flag, um, and the person who it honors the anniversary of the first event in 1972, and is dedicated to uh, Britain's LGBTQ plus community. It's commemorative. 60 suit, it's actually worth 62 cents, but it will not enter circulation. You can buy it. How much does it cost, you know? Well, probably 0.62 cents. No, I bet they're gonna charge. It's That's what it costs, but they're probably gonna charge 50 no, bucks for it. That's what it's worth. Worth, they're probably gonna charge 50 bucks for it. Well, I don't know. Yeah. And some might say, critics say this is an empty gesture, but you know. Oh, well. It's celebratory and commemorative. Yeah. So those are my UK stories. I've okay. got a lot more, but I'll hold them.
Okay. So going through events quickly because we want to come back so Anne and I can talk about monkey pox. <laughs> First, a quick shout out. <coughs> Just before I came up here, I received an email regarding Rita, our recently retired mail carrier. <laughs> By the time this airs, she will have been married. Ah. And I cannot wait to meet your new wife. So... So, trivia. May was National Pet Month. So, please enjoy this picture of out pup Papillon and, his, and their human, George Takai. May was also Jewish American Heritage Month. <coughs> Question. This was the first LGBTQ plus public official confirmed by the Senate. Who were they? So, looking at events, you know, Saturday, June 11th, from 9 to 2 p.m. at Barry City Hall Park. This is the event we've been hearing rumors about. It's called Bake with Love, and it's a fundraiser honoring Fern Feather. And whatever is raised by, you know, all of the delicacies that we can't eat, being, being sold, will go to the Safe Space Program at the Pride Center. And also from 5 to 11 at the Old Labor Hall is the Central Vermont Drag Ball. Mm -hmm. From 5 o'clock on, it's the Come Get Tips. And there, by donation, they will be selling things out of the drag closet. And then at 7 o'clock, doors open, sliding scale, come have fun. Babes is doing the drinks, and they, uh, Wood Belly is doing slices of pizza. So, also though, on Saturday, June 11th, from 11 to 1 p.m., Pride Family Potluck, sponsored by Out in the Open, Brattleboro. It will be at the Kiwanis Shelter at the top of the Living Memorial Park. They're going to have a photo booth from InSight Phot Photography Project to take pictures of our families. Huh. Um, <coughs> Also, Saturday, June 18th, starting at 3 p.m., the St. J. Pride Barn Dance. This is out in the I 802. I wanted to go to that, but we're going to be out of town. Old Silo Farm, Mount Pleasant Street, which is you drive through Main Street in St. Johnsbury and just keep going. So. Oh, that sounds like fun. And, and also keep in mind, out in the 802 is the ones who sponsored the happy hour at Lincoln's in Burlington. Knock on the door, maybe we'll let you in. Yeah. And also the happy hour at the Central Cafe in St. Johnsbury. You can go on their Facebook page to get more details. Okay, and this was an event that brought Linda to mind for me. Saturday, June 18th, 6 to 9 p.m., Champlain Expo Center, think the Champlain Valley Fair in Essex Junction, Pride Skate with Green Mountain Roller Derby. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're so there, right? I am. Come for a night of skate, dancing, and arts. They will have skates available on site, and I think they'll even do a little tutoring. And a portion of the ticket sales is going to benefit Black Trans Advocacy Coalition. So those are the quick events coming right up. Remember, there'll be more the weekend of the 24th to the 26th. Can we get a fuller dance card? I know. But back to you, because we've got monkeypox to talk you about. You've got monkeypox. Yeah. All right. Well, let me just tell you quickly that um, two LGBT candidates face off each other uh, with each other, creating a political rift in Alabama. Britt Blablock, who is non-binary, said uh, she faced inten in, I'm sorry, intense backlash when she announced her campaign against Representative Neil Rafferty, the only openly gay elected official. This is causing a rift within the Democratic Party because they will run against each other in November. Uh, Laylock says cars have been following her when she's canvassing and that she was told that by the chair 
that they discourage donors from supporting her campaign. Uh, Rafferty, who she's running against, is a <coughs> former Marine who worked for a nonprofit group in Birmingham and said that he would never discourage her from running. But Blaylock, when she talked to the Democratic Vice Chair Patricia Todd Allergied, said that she was eating her own. That's not good, is it? So, I know how to make you feel welcome. I know, huh? Welcome. <laughs> Gay student says that uh, his school is stopping him for a run for student leadership, and he's continuing to be punished for standing up for his identity and against widespread hatred. He said he led the protest at his high school, good for him, against Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill and that the school administration is stopping him from running for class president. Petschok is being honored with an award. This is kind of exciting for him. At the 2022 Penn American Literary Awards for an organizing students uh, to protest the flow, the Florida legislation and for fighting book bans. Now this is good. This is going to be really interesting. I think we'll watch this again. But I don't okay, know. the Butch Pal for the straight gal. <laughs> Ruko has released the first episode of this comedy makeover series by the writer, creator, and actor Allie Johnson, who said she was fired from her job on a radio station and was bored, and thought up. Why hasn't there been a female version of the Queer Eye <laughs> before? Wouldn't it be cool if a bunch of lesbians were telling straight women to adopt a pit bull and go hiking? I, I think we can hear the pit bulls outside I know, there giving is a their dog opinions. Barking. Is that outside a dog the in the street? alleyway? Well, there are several out there. Uh -huh. <laughs> they heard it was National Pet Month. <laughs> <laughs> Texas trans girl is attacked in um, El Paso and you know like it was because right after the shooting um, in Texas um, some uh, conservative media said that it was transgender person who did the killing and so this 18 um, so she was just attacked by a group of <coughs> men her name is Tracy they didn't give a last name uh, by four men first they started to slur her and then they started blaming the trans movement for uh, have, uh, being the person who did the shooting. And then they twisted her arm, and when she reported it to the El Paso police, they refused to file, to take and file a complaint. That sounds like Senegal. I know. Sounds oh my like God. Texas. I and um, a GOP politician targets Barnes and Nobles with legal action for a queer book. Good luck with that. I know. The book, Gender Queer, a memoir, has been banned in a number of school libraries. But a Virginia representative is threatening legal action for carrying this book in its Virginia Beach branch. Tim Anderson, who is an attorney, wrote on Facebook, saying his client is looking to seek a restraining order against Barnes & Noble and for local schools to ban selling or lending books to minors without parental consent. Tommy Altman, his client, is a congressional candidate for the district where Barnes & Noble is located. So, mm. no agenda there. No, of course yeah. not. Brittany Gaynor is finally allowed to visit. A uh, visit. Griner. Griner is um, allowed to visit from U.S. diplomats in Russia. And this is interesting from New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire Governor Sununu mm -hmm. vows yeah. to veto a bill that would force outing students. New Hampshire 
and he's pledged to veto a so-called parental bill of rights that would force schools to out LGBTQ students. And he's a Republican, isn't he? Yeah, and he's pretty conservative. I disagree with him about a lot of things, but good for him on this score. And let's see, uh, what else do we have? Oh, I just have one more um, story about a lesbian mom who is um, removed from a birth certificate um, and she is fighting the ruling. Apparently, uh, Chris Williams' name was struck from her child's birth certificate because she was not the just, what do you call it, gestational parent. Mm -hmm. And um, they had a very contentious divorce. They were married in 2019, and apparently they had a child shortly after that through artificial insemination. But it seems like the father has showed up. I don't know how, whether Where, it's through genetics. What state is this? I remember seeing this story. I don't know, actually. This is kind of like... You can the, look it up. This is like the Jenkins um, Miller case here in Vermont. I know. Mm -hmm. I think it's Virginia, but I'm not sure. The, so the judge ruled that her name should be taken off and replaced by the father's. But <clears throat> if it was, I mean, I don't know whether they found the father through genetics. I think he showed up. I yeah, but how would he show up from a... It's alternative insemination. We have no idea the circumstances under which it They might have done Andrewistry.com and found that he was the I don't know. Who hmm. knows? But anyway, he's turned up, and so um, the judge ordered that his name be put on the birth certificate and hers taken off. So I'm sure she will continue to fight this, but I don't know. And Yeah. Um, why don't you continue okay. Googling that while I turn to... Um, some more European news. There are seven out of, I'm sorry, there are seven out LGBTQ plus women players in the French Open and zero men. Now, there's a picture before you of one of the seven out women, Greet Menon, who's 24, from Belgium. The historic nature of that many out players on, um, is not lost on Nick Wee, a former college tennis player at Vassar who was openly gay and who was instrumental in compiling this list. It's possible that there were actually this many, if not more, out women playing in tournaments in recent years, he said, but there may not have been much national and international coverage. That being said, I don't think it's ever widely noted that there are seven out women currently competing in qualifiers and or the main draw of a Grand Slam tournament. As for the men's side, there are LGBTQ plus allies among the top men's players. And you may recall, I told you about Liam Brody, who um, had used the pride laces at the Australian Open. And I showed viewers a picture of the pride laces. Uh, he's an ally. And he said, I don't think it's really a taboo, but I've seen questions before about why there aren't any openly gay men on the tour. And I just wanted to, that to kind of voice my support in that general area. Will a ranked male tennis player ever come out? It can happen in, <laughs> if it can happen in the NFL and the NBA and pro soccer, there is hope. But for now, all the action and praise goes to the women. Yeah. And so let me. It was Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Why am I not surprised? Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's continue this sports thread and talk about soccer star Jake Daniels. There's a picture before you of him. He's 17. He came out and has become the UK's first openly gay men's player in 32 years. He's a Blackpool FC player. He came out on Monday in um, a statement. He's the first openly gay soccer pro since the late Justin Fashionow came out nearly 32 years ago in 1990. Wow. And I have a sad story about Justin Fashionow that I may have shared before, but it bears repeating. Uh, but let's go back to Daniels. I've been hiding the real me and who I really am. 
I've known my whole life that I'm gay. I now feel that I'm ready to come out and be myself. Uh, it's a step into the unknown, being one of the first footballers in this country to reveal my sexuality. But I've been inspired by Josh Cavallo, Matt Morton, and athletes from other sports like Tom Daly to have courage and determination, who have courage and determination to drive change. Um, there were other um, openly gay soccer players, but they, in, but they didn't come out until after their retirement. And he said he thought about waiting until retirement, um, but that would be too long. And I agree with him there. Um, I knew that would lead to a long time of lying and not being able to be myself or lead the life I want to, he said. He said he's not going to change all the homophobic chants and everything, but um, he just needs to learn how not to let it affect him. Yeah. And let me add a quick sad coda. Um, Justin Fashino revealed his sexuality in October 1990. He was accused of sexual harassment later by a 17-year-old boy in 1998. Uh, he was afraid he wouldn't get a fair trial, and this is shocking because homosexuality was illegal at the time in Maryland. Oh. And I looked it up. The sodomy laws were still in the books uh, where he resided. He went back to London and died by suicide shortly oh. afterwards. So um, it's a sad story, but uh, Jake Daniels, is changing the tune for soccer, out gay soccer players. Uh, good for him. More good news, believe it or not, from Poland. I have a picture before you now of really? Barto, yes, Barto Staszewski. Uh, you see him posing there. He's an LGBT activist and creator of the photography LGBT Free Zones project, and here he is posing for a photo inside his home in Warsaw. Um, a court in the Polish city of Rysisto has thrown out a case against him. Um, he was being sued by the Nieblik commune for defamation. Nieblik, a village in southeastern Poland, is home to about 10,000 people. In 2019, along with dozens of communities across Poland, it passed a resolution to stop LGBTQ ideology. In response, um, Staszewski designed a campaign in which he photographed himself and other LGBT people with signs reading LGBTQ free zone at the entrance to places that had, enact had enacted these resolutions or similarly discriminatory family charters. Three of the nearly 100 localis, localities with these policies sued Straszewski for defamation and demanded he apologize for calling their community an LGBT-free zone in the media, which they had <laughs> they already had declared up, themselves. Right? In a 2020 report, the Council of Europe Commissioner for Human Rights found that certain areas' anti-LGBT policies were having a chilling effect on people who live there, and that activists working to denounce such declarations have also been subjected to specious lawsuits filed by local governments or conservative organizations like this one was. <laughs> the European Commission has taken legal action against Poland for these zones, and it may be noted that um, the commune withdrew its anti-LGBTQ zone designation, uh, but the court wrote in its decision, indeed authorities cannot claim they're ashamed in order to bring disingenuous defamation charges, but they should absolutely be ashamed of their discriminatory and harmful policies. So, they, you know, good news from Poland. Uh, mixed news from Lithuania. Lithuanian lawmakers agree to consider a same-sex partnership bill, although it has been revealed that 70% of the population doesn't agree with same-sex um, marriage. Lawmakers are still uh, agree, they've agreed to further discuss a proposal that comes after Lithuania, Lithuania voted down a single this a piece of legislation banning same-sex marriage. They voted down 
a same-sex marriage proposal. So now they're agreeing to discuss an LGBTQ freedom bill. Um, a bisexual actress and activist said, um, my, feeling are mi my feelings are mixed after the vote. On the one hand, the parliament took a step toward Europe, towards Western values, but on the other hand, there's nothing joyous about even such a restrained bill that it can't pass without a big fight with powerful homophobes hurling insults at citizens who want equal rights. So there's going to be uh, fireworks probably in Lithuania, we'll but look, it's the Catholic Church. We'll look forward to, although I think there was one of the, one country, a uh, Baltic country that the Greek or the uh, Russian Orthodox Church went against Russia to condemn their going to the going to Ukraine, which was kind of interesting. Oh yeah. Um, may I just end with a upbeat European story? And what about your clip? This is my clip. It involves All right. my clip. I think you should. This is Finland, and uh, this is the first. First of all, this film which is called Girl Picture, uh, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival where it got an audience award. It was the first Finnish film to get an audience award and it's an almost entirely women, if not entirely women production. Everybody's very excited about it. And let me tell you about the plot. <laughs> Mimi, Emma, and Ronko are girls at the cusp of womanhood trying to draw their own contours. In three consecutive Fridays, two of them experience the earth-moving effects of falling in love, while the third goes on a quest to find something she's never experienced before, pleasure. Best friends Mimi and Ronko work after school at a food court, smoothie kiosk, <laughs> frankly swapping stories of their frustrations and expectations regarding love and sex. Volatile misfit Mimi unexpectedly swept up in the thrill of a new romance with Emma, who is a driven skater for the European Championships, struggles to adjust to the trust and compromise required by a lasting relationship. Meanwhile, the offbeat, indefatigable Ronco <laughs> hits the teen party scene, stumbling through a series of awkward encounters with members of the opposite sex while hoping to find her own version of satisfaction. So let's take a look at the trailer for Girl Picture. Muistat sä silloin lapsena, kun sä kuivarukkasit ekaa kertaa tyynyyn? Ja sit sä olit silleen, että mitä helvettiä, että onks tää se, mistä kaikki puhuu? Joo. Mä pelkään, että mä en ikin tunne sitä, mitä kaikki muut tuntee. Mitä se on? Haluaa olla niin lähellä jotain ihmistä, et ees riitä, et ihot koskettaa, et... Do you wanna mango with me? Uh. Kiinnostat mua enemmän kuin mikään muu täällä. Ainakin mä oon rehellinen itselleni. Ja ihan sama, mitä se vaikuttaa muihin. Ainakaan mä en käytä sua hyväkseni johonkin vittu ekaan kapinaan elämässäni. Vaikka muuttunut ajat ja on muuttunut tavat, niin mä asetan mun rajat. Vaikka on puuttunut sanat ja on puuttunut lavat, mulla on kasassa mun pala. Jos sanot älä me älä tee, niin mä me ja mä tee. Jos painat mua alas, niin mä nousen aina uudelleen. Tässä kuuluis taputtaa. I'm really excited about that. So it looks like a really good film. I know, and it's just coming to festivals, and I tried to see if I could pin down where I could recommend it for viewers. It's not on Netflix yet, but you know, keep Maybe your it eyes will. out for yeah. it. All right, Keith. So we're going to talk about politics a little bit. We just had two candidates announce 
the offices for which they are running, and they are both members of our LGBTQ plus community. The first one is Michael Pycheck, <coughs> who is running for state treasurer. People may recognize him because he just stepped down as commissioner of financial regulation, and during the height of COVID, he was the administration's COVID <coughs> czar. And he also has spent time working with the Secretary of State's office and Beth Pierce, who is the outgoing treasurer, personally asked him to run for office. And Mike lives in Winooski with his husband, Will, and probably more importantly, Telly, who, <coughs> I, who I predict will be the star of the campaign. Telly is their setter. Yeah. We've met Telly, very charming. <laughs> The other candidate who's announced, and this is in the Democratic primary for the U.S. Senate seat, is Isaac Evan Franz. And I actually met him at the Proposition 5 rally where he and his campaign staff were there. He is also from Brattleboro where he currently lives with his husband. What's notable about Isaac and his sense of involvement in Vermont politics, in 2000, he was appointed by then Governor Howard Dean to be the first high school student on the Board of Education, not as a ceremonial position. He had voting privileges. Wow. So there we go. Following Linda's sad news, coming out of Hyde Park, they had the arraignment for the assailant who's been charged with the second degree murder of Fern Feather. And he is again stating that he is not guilty, that, and per his public defender, the alleged assailant has made a cogent and immediate and ambiguous claim of self-defense. Yeah. Well, the, the Lamoille County State's Attorney immediately countered with, there was nothing in the police report that supported that, requested, and the judge granted that he be held without bail, but battened down the hatches this is not going to be a it's fun get ride. Ugly. Yeah. yeah, and related to that, HRC and Media Matters for America released a piece of information that just makes your jaw drop. 2021 was the deadliest year in as far as the transgender community, with That's 57 surprise. with 57 identified transgender people having been murdered, but. During all of that time, there were only 19 new segments devoted to violence against the transgender community for a total of 43 minutes. And a third of that was by MSNBC during Pride Month. Mm -hmm. So Chester, Vermont, you know, talking about libraries and books and there are library director has resigned because their library trustees put a pause on a pe presentation that they had agreed to sponsor, the Drag, Drag Queen, Queen Story Hour. Oh, I would and, have resigned too. Well, and the, well, the community showed up in force and looked at the trustee saying, what are you doing just because this is Drag Queen LGBTQ you're going through websites, you're looking for stuff. <coughs> they, they did not get a lot of community support. And one of the local restaurants stepped in and said, we're going to do it here. Mm -hmm. So it will be happening in Chester, just not at their library. Planned Parenthood, we, they released a statement that they were closing four of their offices, yep. Bennington, Hyde Park, Middlebury, and St. Albans. Well, what I have been, what has been shared with me by Queer Connect, which is the LGBTQ plus group in Bennington, is that the Planned Parenthood office was the primary care provider for the transgender community, so that all of the people who have been going to them for care have no resources now. And it made me wonder how many of these other communities they were the Why primary. The Do you know? Well, it, it's <coughs> consolidation, it's budget <coughs> considerations, and it's preparing for the overturn of Roe v. Way, 
where those clinics that offer abortion services They'll need more because people are becoming no, but but those clinics that are licensed for that medical procedure, they're the ones that are going to need the resources. Mm. So they're they're preparing for that, which I kind of understand, but. But we need to be asking, okay, what happens with these services? And since we're on health care, let's, let's talk monkeypox. And the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control stepping in it yet again with the initial releases about the global spread and attributing it to the gay and bisexual male populations. They again... They well, came. no, what, what had happened is that there were several festivals. And parties. LGBTQ related, and this is where there were occurrences. So rather than looking at the practice, which is prolonged body contact, sharing bedding, et cetera, oh, they blamed the person who was infected. Mm -hmm. So, but, and you've. Let me chime in. UN AIDS released yeah. a statement Sunday condemning the reporting on monkeypox that includes portrayals of LGBTQIA and African people that the agency says reinforces homophobic and racist stereotypes and exacerbates stigma. Lessons from the response to AIDS show that stigma and blame directed at certain groups of people can rapidly undermine outbreak response. It, this group urged the media governments and communities to respond with rights-based, evidence-based mm. approaches that avoid stigma. So a UN yeah. agency has condemned it. Talk, talk about when you're at risk versus who you are. But right. Equality Maine, they're ready for the political season, and they sent out a notice saying the Maine Republican Party they had their platform committee. People's, we, the LGBTQ plus community, should be watching because they endorse an intentionally anti-LGBTQ platform. And Paul LePage is coming <gasps> back to oh, run him. for governor, so get ready. Oh, no. Part of their proposal is banning comprehensive sex education through the 12th grade, to heck with this K through three, barring transgender girls from competing in girls' sports, preventing teachers from discussing gender issues in school, divisive subjects, don't say gay, defending that marriage is only between a man and a woman. They did their first attack ad, which was taking an educator who was talking about gender equity and picking out pieces and saying, this is what you should be afraid of. This is the grooming and the liberal agenda in our schools. Hmm. When I read this, I said, okay, let's look at their platform. And their platform really does look like the template coming out of the national GOP. I looked at New Hampshire's. New Hampshire's Republican Party platform is incredibly similar to Maine. It's really? format. It's formatted in a similar structure. It has the same theme, slightly different language. One of the things with Sununu <coughs> saying in New Hampshire about he He'll would veto, veto the uh, 1431, their attorney general made a statement saying, if you pass this, it is in violation of our non-discrimination statutes, and therefore it is not constitutional. Good. I looked at Vermont's. Yeah. Now, Vermont has similar things, <clears throat> but is, and I'm going to use an old term, it's a kinder, gentler, <laughs> but it still goes in the same direction. And before I forget to what Equality Maine had shared to highlight the the extremes to which their, the main Republican Party will go. The story you were reporting about the Uvalde shooter was transgender <coughs> and groomed by the liberal teachers. Their candidates were sharing it on their Facebook pages mm -hmm. and had to take it down oh, because, good. of course, it, it was not accurate. Well, the person on a national level took it down saying, okay, it was incorrect. But he, here was the statement they put out. 
I let my concern and some false information get the best of me. <laughs> That's hardly a, an apology or an acknowledgement of the damage you just did. Do we have anything else, or should I go to trivia? I think you should go to trivia. And I have a positive point if there's time, but do trivia okay. first. Yeah, because you want to know who it is. Remember, this is Jewish American Heritage Month. This was the first LGBTQ plus public official confirmed by the U.S. Senate. I, Linda asked for, so I gave her some hints. It happened in 1993, which means that it was a position appointed by Bill Clinton. This person was also a civil rights attorney. They were one of the co-founders of the National Center for Lesbian Rights and were on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. And maybe I should have said that her partner since 1981 has been Mary Morgan and they have a son, Benjamin, together. And this was Roberta Actenberg. So, Yay. thank you. All right, so one positive thing I omitted from my last Publishing Triangle Awards announcements were, was the Lifetime Achievement Award was won by Cherie Moraga, and Sarah Schulman got a special award for that wonderful book, Let the Record Show. Yeah. So let's right. applaud everyone. <laughs> okay, on that note... I think we're just about out of time. So remember, resist. To resist.